History is awash with talented musicians who've fallen victim to the self-destructive nature of the cliched lifestyle of sex, drugs and rock and roll. It is perhaps this dark side of the industry that fascinates us most. We had girls, everybody was smashed, we were loud, we were obnoxious, and we were having a blast. When it comes to rock stars who hit the headlines and hit bottom for all the wrong reasons, few, if any, can compete with Nikki Six, the bass player and songwriter of the heavy metal band Motley Crue. I think Motley Crue is a was an animal that indulged in anything and everything we could. We wanted the biggest stage shows, we wanted to consume the most, we wanted to be the loudest, we wanted to dress the loudest. That's what we wanted, and, and when we got it. In the 1980s, Motley Crue joined the ranks of America's biggest selling bands. If the music was outrageous, loud and heavy, it was nothing compared to the band's real lives. For Nikki Six, with a troubled childhood and an addictive personality, this lifestyle was an accident waiting to happen. I think that that 86, 87 period was the worst part of my life, but ramping up to that, a year before that in 85, I was a heroin addict. And that was also horrible, but it even got worse through um, cocaine use and, you know, speed balls and getting into the paranoia and using the heroin to come down from the cocaine. And, it, and we were off the road for a certain part of that. And I, and I really, you know, went into a downward spiral. With success, so Six's rendezvous with disaster got ever closer. He was actually pronounced dead after a heroin overdose. He was brought back to life before it was too late. And yet this was just further fodder for Six. It inspired the song, Kickstart My Heart. Did you ever believe that the drugs enhanced your songwriting creativity? No. You never fooled yourself. No, and I've talked to a lot of different artists that said to me that they believed that that was the case, that the, the drugs made them free to let whatever it is that's inside you come out. And I don't think that it made us better musicians, probably made us worse. On tour, the Rockstar's Day is all about the build-up to the concert, an incredible natural high which, when it's all over, leaves in its wake a vast come down. You do the performance and there is the worst part. Then it was like, oh my God, the adrenaline's gone. I need more. And that, that was the worst. Those were the, on, on touring, those are the worst hours. Between the time you get off stage at like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock to like six o'clock in the morning. That's the self-destruction hours. Oh, but they're easily filled, aren't they? Because you have an entire retinue of people around you. Well, of course. Who connive in feeding your addiction. I'm, I'm torn. There is a part of this industry, and, and let's use a record company as an example. Do they really want to ruffle the feathers of the band that's in the groove, that's in that magic moment, that's making them $10 a record and they're selling five, six, 10 million records? You do the math on that. Do they really want to ruffle the feathers of those people? Or do they just want to let them go down in flames? It's a question I, I probably will never have an answer for. Fantastic. Nikki Six is now 48 and has found a degree of inner peace. It's been 20 years since he took heroin. He has been completely clean and sober for the past six years. 
He's now publishing The Heroine Diaries. It's a 365-day account of his drug-infused year between 1986 and 87. With commentary from others who were there at the time. There's only one word to describe it. Brutal. When you read your diaries and you discovered them, I don't need to ask whether you were horrified because I suspect you were. I actually cried. I laughed. I was in shock. I was very happy that I survived it. It was all kinds of feelings. I mean, it was, it was really amazing because at the time when I started reading that section, I had also been glancing at 81, 82, 83, 84, you know, reading about this, this little baby band with the dream, getting our first record deal. But when I hit 86, 87, it, it, it stopped me in my tracks. There's nothing like a trail of blood to find your way back home. Today, Nikki Six gets a natural high from the audience when playing with his band 6AM. He says it's stronger than anything ever chemically induced. If I say the phrase to you, it's only rock and roll, mm. what does it mean to you? You know what, I really like that, because it is only rock and roll. And I want to be able to make music on my terms, that's not any different than it used to be. But the ego, the higher me, 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 the narcissistic side, it just gets in the way of the music. And as, a, as an artist, being able to keep connecting to what really turned me on as a kid, the music, connecting to it and pulling from it and pumping it out in one way or another. I wanna keep being an artist because that's actually what feeds my soul. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Nikki Six had to go through the hell of sex, drugs and rock and roll before realising that there's nothing in the rules that say rock stars have to suffer that way. He has the perspective of wisdom and hindsight. Still to come, the man who made the machine that makes the music. Les Paul, the pioneer of the electric guitar, still enthralling his public at age 92.